Uh, Vince, toss the ball back to you. I'm sure you got two or three more good questions. Yeah. So on this channel, there's a lot of retail investors who, who watch us, obviously. And almost all of them really like Rocket Lab. And there is the group who is like, okay, I'm investing in Rocket Lab. And then there is a much bigger group who is uh, afraid to pull the trigger because of SpaceX. And they mm -hmm. are worried that Starship development is going too good. Uh, they have they hear stories that once Starship is ready, then there will be a bunch of Falcon 9s that are going to be uh, obsolete and they will be discounted into oblivion. And mm -hmm. how can anybody uh, compete with that? And uh, how would you address these investors? And what is Rocket Lab's edge over SpaceX? Is it the end-to-end -end servicing of the customer and you know, including launches and thereby maybe securing the, the, the schedule? Or is there other advantages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think uh, probably a similar thing was said when the A380 was produced, um, uh, that there would be no 737s anymore and certainly no private jets. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone would just be flying around in A380s because the cost per seat was so low. Um, the world doesn't work like that, right? Uh, and, and physics doesn't work like that. Um, think of Electron as the private jet. Um, it's expensive, but, you know, it's... It, when, when you need one and you need to get somewhere, then it, it works exactly where it works extraordinarily well. Um, and, you know, the Falcon 9 slash Neutron is a 737, which is, you know, the, the, the main staple of, of all commercial air travel. And if you've, if you've got a, a constellation that, that is, you know, you know a, a, your typical kind of constellation, um, you need to go to multiple planes. So there's no point in putting, you know, 15 tons worth of satellites in a rocket that can lift 150 or 100 tons. Um, it's just a whole bunch of dead space. And, you know, the cost per kilogram metric in that sense especially is kind of irrelevant because at the end of the day, you don't actually sell cost per kilogram, you sell cost per rocket. So, you know, the cost per satellite, if you, most of the rocket is empty, is really, really expensive. Um, so it's not, not, not cheap at all. Um, and I think look, the Starships, are, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great program. It's super exciting to watch. Um, it may or may not be a, How, a Howard Hughes moment. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see. I think, don't think, I think it'd be crazy to second guess Elon, but um, it, it's not super clear to me, um, you know, other than if you want to go to Mars um, and, and do those other things, you know, where, where the, 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 the massive commercial advantage comes from. Um, I think it'll be a super great vehicle for lifting heavy stuff. And I think, you know, there's definitely a need for that and it's going to be great. But I think it doesn't, it doesn't eliminate the need for the 737s or the, the, the medium class launch. And that, that, that is a, and I say that with some confidence because it's a physics based bound problem. Um, so it's not, it's not, it, it's, it's less, less tied to markets. It's just, you know, there's no point in flying an empty rocket um, because mm -hmm. the, the, the cost per rocket or cost per satellite just goes through the roof. So uh, less worried about that. I mean, um, more to your question, how do you, how do you, you know, what is the edge on, on over SpaceX and, and whatnot? And, and I think, you know, the, the companies are significantly different, but also significantly similar. Um, and, you know, it's important to remember that what we're trying to do here is, is not just provide a launch service to space or build satellites for everybody else. I think that right now in this, the, the phase of the company, that's where we're at. But I think, you know, we've been, we've been clear that the end point here is an end-to-end -end company where you're providing services. Um, and launch, launch will become, you know, I, I fully predict that Neutron, 50% of Neutron launches will be other people's and 50% of Neutron launches will be ourselves. So um, that, that's how I kind of see it rolling out in the future. And, and uh, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a great example of that already. And it's created, uh, you know, a, a very, very distinctive change in, in, in the industry. And I think that change is here to stay. So, you know, I, I think, like I said before, I think the big space, there's going to be big space companies in the future and they're going to have their own rocket. One's going to be SpaceX, one's going to be Rocket Lab. And we'll see, we'll see you know, how, how history kind of dictates that in the future. But, um, but I think, you know, if, if you don't have your own launch vehicle of that scale or, you know, medium class launch vehicle, you're, you're kind of done for. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. You gave me a total different angle. I never thought about this, that the constellation has to be like, you can't just like, if it's a thousand satellites, you can't just like fit the 1000 satellites into one rocket because they need to go to different places and yeah, then, different planes. yeah. And, and then the, 
and then the starship is too much then it, it becomes super expensive to yeah operate well thank you so much peter i know our time is running out now uh there is rumors that there might be a launch party at the first launch of neutron for retail investors is it something we can count on well, it's a rumor I've never heard, but it sounds like a good idea. So <laughs> maybe we just make that happen. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on a great quarter and looking forward to some amazing news from Rocket Lab in the future. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your support. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.